Hi GSP, this is a quick yoga class, yoga break um, for the morning actually when you're, you haven't yet done any exercise during the day and you're looking to open the body and also just create some space in your day to take some time for you. So I'm going to keep it short. If you haven't done yoga before, try to be in bare feet uh, and try to have a mat or a flat surface. Um, I'm in Brooklyn, so I'm in the park right now in Prospect Park and uh, it's flat enough. So you want it to be gentle on your knees and especially when you lie down in Savasana at the end, you want a, a place to put your head that's nice. Okay, so you decide what that is. So wherever you are, find yourself in a comfortable seat. Roll your shoulders back and down. We're gonna start with the same warm up that we did uh, in our last class. If you did that warm up, great. If not, here it is again. The chin comes up, looking at the sky. Don't drop your neck too far back. And then bring your chin to your chest. And we're gonna do that three or four more times, moving really slow. Notice how stable my shoulders are. I'm not hunching my shoulders up or like trying to move my back. I'm just gently stretching the back of the neck and the front of the neck evenly with stability. Now come to center, ear to shoulder, one side, then the other. Just nice and easy. If you have any kind of pain when you're doing yoga, please back off, please stop. The point is not to twist yourself into a pretzel. The point is to expand your flexibility and your strength so that you're more stable and present in the world. Now we're gonna do half circles. So one side and then I say half because we're not dropping our head back. We're kind of just doing like a, a straight across the back. And once again, we're gonna do these a couple more times. You might hear or feel cracking or popping. As long as it doesn't hurt, it's okay. Now switch direction. So gentle neck warm up. I always start my classes with these because we don't care for our neck and shoulders the way that we should, most of us. And by the end of our lives, that can be causing us lots of problems as we get older. I mean, we're living to be 120, so we got to keep this into account, right? <laughs> At least. So you see I'm doing some big shoulder circles, using my hands on my knees to get more traction. Now the other way. Great. Now, from here, we're going to do what in yoga they call cat-cow. It's really just warming up the spine. So you're going to come, hands and knees are all, um, hands are shoulder width apart, knees are hip width apart. My fingertips are pointing forward and I'm on my toes. Okay, so my shoulders, elbows, wrists in a straight line. I'm gonna inhale, bring my heart center forward, look up. Exhale, tuck my chin, look at my belly button. Push away with my hands. Okay, so inhale, arch, look up. This is the cow part for those of you wondering. Exhale, rounding, looking at the belly. And again, gentle movements warming up the spine. Nice and easy here, it's morning. Just doing some simple stretches to start the day. Or taking a break in the middle of the morning or whatever, as you like. Okay, a few more rounds of these. And now we're gonna come back to downward facing dog. So check this out, we're gonna tuck our toes, push our hands, lift our knees and push back the downward facing dog. So my feet are still hip width apart and my hands are still shoulder width apart. I'm grounding into my hands and pushing back, dropping my heels towards the ground as my hips rise. So if you're here, nod your head yes, shake your head no. Your knees can be really bent. Whatever feels good. Over time, you're going to straighten. And from here, I want you to consider really deepening your breath. Strong inhale, strong exhale and an even inhale and exhale. Matching the energy you take in with the energy you're releasing. Now slowly we're gonna walk our feet towards our hands. Notice how bent my knees are. Your knees can be really bent here. Grab a hold of opposite elbows, fold your hands into the elbow creases and just hang down. Keeping the knees bent takes this out of the lower back. If you want, you can swing gently side to side and feel 
the backs of the legs slowly start to awaken, release the arms, push the feet into the ground, 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 come up. Roll your shoulders back and down and then come and stand in mountain pose at the front of your mat. So I'm going to face you so you can see what I'm doing. The mountain pose is feet hip width apart, shoulders rolled back and down, the knees are slightly bent, palms are forward. So we're going to breathe here for three rounds. Again, inhale, exhale evenly, nice and deep from the belly. Connecting your feet to the earth. I call this grounding. So when you hear me talk about grounding, what I mean is all of our energy is allowed to root down so we can feel that stability and support from below. Strong foundation. Okay, so from here, we're going to start with a very simple sun salutation and just move ourselves through this. So we're going to inhale, reach up straight from the fingertips, looking between the hands if you like. If you like, you can join the hands. And now on your next exhale, slowly dive down. Hands and fingers, fingers and toes are in line. Knees can bend. We're going to come to a forward bend here. And inhale, look up. Now inhale, look up. My abdominals are contracted. My back is straight. I'm going to pick up my right foot and lunge it back. Okay. So from here, my, I'm on my toes. My heel is up. My knee and my ankle are in a straight line or even moving my foot forward to protect the knee. Okay. This is called low lunge. Now my left foot is forward, so we're gonna ground the right hand and open up. I'm gonna face away from you, but look at this twist. Now as you move into the twist, keep the back leg straight and strong and breathe deep. And now bring that hand down and we're gonna come into high lunge. So ground through your back foot and bring your hands up to your hips. You're going to feel this stronger in the legs. Find your balance. And if you'd like, you can add the arms. Inner rotate the pinkies as if you're holding a beach ball. And if you like, you can look between your hands. Breathe deep here. Even inhale, even exhale. Ideally, in through the nose, out through the nose. And now hands come down on either side of the feet. We're gonna step back to a push-up position and hold this for a few breaths. So notice my heels, my hips, my shoulders are in one straight line. Now I'm gonna drop my knees to the ground, my chest to the ground and my chin to the ground. This looks awkward. And then inhale, come up on my belly. Now at this point, tops of my feet are against the earth. My fingertips are right under my shoulders. I'm in cobra and my elbows are hugging in. It's called cobra pose. Tuck your chin. Make sure you've not gone so high that you can't lift your hands. Now from here, we're gonna push back to our knees, downward facing dog. So find your feet hip width apart, fingertips hip width apart, um, shoulder width apart. And exhale, downward facing dog. Again, the heels ground down as the hips rise up. Now we're gonna step our right foot forward back into that lunge. Great. So you're on the ball of the back foot here, as you can see. The knee is above the ankle, but not in front of it. So as I'm moving my toes forward to adjust that. And now my left hand grounds down as my right arm opens. You can look wherever you want here, but what you're really going for is a straight line from the back of the heels to your shoulders. A line of energy running straight. So you don't want to relax your body and like try to move into the twist more. You want really strong legs, energized legs, strong body. And to support the twist with your strength. And if you like, you can even look up at the hand. We're going to take this to high lunge. So hands on either side of the foot. You see, I'm regrounding my back foot because I need it for balance to come up. Now here we are in our high lunge, getting alignment. Knee is moving towards the pinky toe, coming out. Not jutting in towards the midline, but away. When you've got the legs, add the arms. And take nice deep breaths from the belly. Now hands come on either side of the foot. Step back to plank. And we're gonna lower this time to the top of a push-up, from the top of a push-up all the way 
to the ground but without touching. It's called chaturanga. You can do the other version, knees, chest, chin, if you want. Inhaling to cobra, I'm gonna show you what that looks like, but if you're waiting for chaturanga, stay here for a second. This, and coming up. Or, you can lower really slowly, hugging the elbows into the body. Notice I'm not actually touching the ground here. And then come to the tops of the feet. Deeper back bend. This is called up dog. Now tuck the feet with the strength of the shoulders. Pull the body back. Downward facing dog. Breathe nice and deep here. In through the nose, out through the nose. Inner rotate the hands and press into the fleshy part of the first two fingers and the thumb. And now just drop to your knees. Wide knees, toes touch, hips come back, walk your hands straight out, shoulder width apart, child's pose, forehead to the mat. And now make sure that all of the parts of your hands are grounded into the earth. So you're not tenting your fingertips, you're letting the energy from your hands press into the earth, all of the muscles and the tendons, relaxing, releasing into the ground. Now come to sit with your legs in front of you. This is called Dandasana, staff pose. We're gonna flex our feet if possible, even like lifting the heels up a tiny bit off the mat. It's gonna energize the backs of your legs. You're gonna find your edge here. So this is what this looks like. Straight back, inhale, arms up, reach, extend, lengthen through the spine and using your core, lean over straight back. As straight as possible. At a certain point, your hands are gonna to come to your shins, your ankles, maybe even your feet. If you like, you can even hook your first two fingers around your big toes, but don't worry if you're not there yet, you will be one day. And let yourself breathe deeply here. Deep inhale, exhale. Feeling the backs of the legs and go to your edge. So I'm not saying it should hurt, it shouldn't hurt, but you should feel it. You decide where that is. Every day it changes, so go easy. It's a basic practice, a short practice, but still find your edge. Now from here, come up, straight back. We're gonna fold the feet together. I'm gonna turn so you can see me on this one. The feet are folded together in a diamond shape, like a V, so I'm pulling my ankles towards my pelvis. And as I do that, I can straighten my back with the leverage from my ankles. So you see my heart center and my sternum rise here. Once again, breathing deep. And then from here, we're gonna exhale forward bend. I'm not gonna go so far because this is um, the New York City park. I don't wanna put my face in the dirt. <laughs> but you can hold in your elbows and exhale just as far as your hip flexors will allow. This is a deep stretch, so go gentle, go easy. Those of us who spend a lot of time sitting and also dealing with a lot of high intensity can hold and store tension deep in the joints of the hips. It's also where if we do have back issues, our back issues often can start. So we wanna keep the ligaments of the pelvis open, stretched, happy. Slowly come up, fantastic, and bring the knees together. We're gonna go straight into Savasana, but before we do, we're gonna do one stretch often called tabletop or altar pose. Feet are hip width apart, fingertips pointing at your hips. You lift your hips up so you get a stretch in the shoulders. And just look at the sky. You can drop your head back, but I don't like to stress the cervical vertebrae of my neck. You just feel a gentle stretch. Great, and come back down. And now I'd like you to go into Savasana. So here's what it looks like, and then I'm gonna sit up and cue. You're lying on the ground. Your feet are mat width apart. Your palms are up about 30 degrees away from your body. And your head is on the ground and your eyes are closed and you're relaxing. So I'm gonna cue you. You stay there, stay in Savasana and I'm gonna sit and cue how to relax. So you're still lying on the mat at this point. 
And so the point of savasana is the most important point of yoga, which is to relax, to create space in the body for the mind to settle. So now that we've moved through a few very basic asanas or yoga poses, we're relaxing. We're integrating our practice. And so imagine every muscle, joint, ligament, bone, organ, every part of your body relaxing, releasing into the earth. And on your exhale, deepen that relaxation. Encourage your body to relax. This is a process. Your mind may wander. You may find it difficult to close your eyes. It's fine. Just stay with it for these moments of intention for relaxation. So we're literally teaching our body how to relax in this pose. So go easy on yourself. Let your breath be heavy. And with every exhale, drop deeper into relaxation. Into stillness. Every exhale, relaxing, releasing tension from wherever tension is sitting in the body. Just for a few more moments. And now I encourage you to wiggle your fingers and your toes. Let your head fall from one side to the other. And with your eyes still closed, or open them if you need to, roll to one side in a fetal position so your knees are hugged into your chest. And you're resting here for a moment with your eyes closed as you come up. And the idea is to move slowly out of the relaxation so you take the quality and intention of the relaxation with you as we close our practice. And so once again, we're sitting cross-legged or however you like to sit on the floor. Hands are on the knees, you can have your palms up. If you like, you can even join them in this like super fancy yoga mudra, which is just a way to hold your hands. It looks cool, but either way is fine. I just like to keep my palms up. Roll the shoulders back and down, shine the heart center forward, and lean back just a little so that your shoulders, your head, your hips are in one straight line. Once again, find your breath, breathe deep from your belly. Even inhale, even exhale. Nice, deep, easy breaths. Eyes closed, centering, grounding in the practice. Integrating everything that we've done in these few minutes we've had together. And if you like, we can close, bring the hands to heart center. Inhale, bring the energy of the heart to the mind. Exhale, energy of the mind to the heart. Thank you so much for practicing today. And uh, if you need any support, please get in touch.